everyone, it's your girl Rose. Welcome to my camper van. I love it, it's my tiny home on wheels. It is a Ram Promaster 2021 model. I bought it back in April of 2021 and got a professional van builder to build it out for me. That took six months and I picked up the van in December and I've been on the road ever since. I love it so much. I will tell you all about how much it costs, all the details a little bit later on in this video. But for now, I wanna give you a little tour. Well, hello, come on in. I say we start from front to back and start with the cab area. So the cab area is not that exciting. I usually sit here when I'm driving, except Jupiter seems to take over my seat whenever he gets a chance. It's kind of annoying. I always have to tell him to move, but this is where he's supposed to sit in the passenger seat. I've also arranged a little bed for him down there, but he seems to prefer being higher up. Okay, so the cab area is not that interesting, but what does make it very interesting is that it swivels around. I installed the swivel seat so that I could kind of make use of the cab area and turn it into extra sitting space. Um, so I think it just opens up the space. That way I can have a friend here while I'm over there. Also, something cool is this countertop comes up, so it's like an extra working space. So wherever possible, you want to think about how you can multitask with the space that you have. So I love the swivel seat. Also something that you don't see is that there's a heater down here. That was quite an expense, but I thought it was really necessary because I spend a lot of time in cold weather places. Um, the heat draws from the gas tank of the car, which is really handy because it's very fuel efficient and it's just... Um, you don't have to worry about fueling um, another source. You just fill up your car tank, which you do anyway. So I love that. It is a Wabasto heater. Um, I'll add links to everything below. So that's it for the cab area. I usually just keep this closed for some privacy. I think the curtains look really nice. Um, and so moving on to the kitchen area. Welcome to my kitchen. This is also my bathroom sink. It's a lot of things. So I have a butcher block countertop, which is a little bit high maintenance, but I think it looks really nice. I wanted a woody, bright, natural look to everything. So this is the kitchen sink. It's actually a full-size sink, not the typical tiny RV sink where you can't even fit anything. I can wash plenty of dishes, whatever I want in here. Also, van life means you're driving around a lot, so things have to be fixed in place, which is why I installed a dish soap dispenser into the countertop, as well as a drinking water filter. Um, this soap dish is what I use to wash my hands and it's velcroed on because really van life, when you drive, everything moves. So wherever you can, you want to just install things. So I love this sink. Another cool feature is this detaches so you can even um, rinse your feet outside if you go to the beach or something. I haven't used it yet, but I just like that it's it's really like a sink that you would find at home. Another thing that I love about this van is the fruit hammock. I installed this after the fact, but I realized I didn't have anywhere to store bananas and it just adds so much storage because I did not know where to put my bananas. It swings a lot when I drive, but I think it looks cute and it's just super handy. All right, moving right along to my other favorite thing in the van, my spice rack. So I had my builder do this pop out where he builds into the wall and cuts out a hole and adds some shelves. I think this is a really smart way to add a lot of storage space without taking up more space. So I still have to fill up and eventually label the spice jars, but I love this. And here's my little cooking setup. I opted for a not built in propane cook stove. I could have gotten one built in. I might do that later on, but I kind of like that this is very portable and I can even take this whole thing outside and cook on a picnic table if I want. So far I've been able to heat and cook pretty much all my food on this one little pan and you can even just store it like this. It's just so compact, I love it. And it's interesting because I'm a girl that loves all my kitchen stuff. I've got my Le Creuset Dutch oven, my cast iron skillet, my slow cooker, everything. But I really had to downsize my kitchen. That was probably the hardest part, but once you just have what you have, you learn to just live with it. So that's been really interesting. Now I will say I have a huge drawer down here for my Instant Pot and air fryer. I did not want to give that up. So the Instant Pot is a dual air fryer, which is amazing. You guys have to get one. But when I was planning out the layout for this fan, because this Instant Pot is so huge, I had my builder build a cabinet around this thing and make sure it was tall enough and wide enough to fit it because 
I didn't want to leave it to chance. So when you're doing your van build, if there's some important appliances or equipment that you know you want to have, make sure you build the cabinets around it and don't leave it as an afterthought. So other than the air fryer slash instant pot, I've got one more pan there and some collapsible strainer slash bowls, which is really cool. Um, I use a lot of collapsible things in this pan because a bowl would just take up way too much space. So these are super, super handy. Just everything is on Amazon. And yeah, so that is it for this drawer. It's a little bit messy. I got to figure out how to organize it. And here is where I put some of my blender stuff. I've got this little tea kettle, also collapsible. I use this every single day to make my coffee and my hot lemon water in the mornings. Also, I've got a huge little pantry here. This is where I put all my smoothie things, my dried goods, my pastas, sauces. I've got a bunch of Korean ingredients like gochujang and dried anchovies to make stews. So I love it. I've got a ton of food in here. Definitely a nice handy kitchen. Over here we've got the sink door, which also has a handy trash can. This kind of latches to the door. I got it on Amazon. It is amazing. This is where I also keep my Nutribullet, where I make smoothies every morning. Some cleaning supplies. It's a little bit messy down here. This is my gray water tank, which is basically where the dirty water from the sink goes into. Now I have a way to reroute the water so that it goes outside just to the floor instead so I don't have to carry around dirty water in this gray water tank. So that's what I usually do. My dirty sink water just go to the ground. I'm usually in cities or parked in front of friends houses so it's okay. But if I was in like a national park then I wouldn't want to put my dirty water there. So that's when I would use the gray water tank. All right now I'm going to show you the area of the van where I probably spend the most time other than of course the driver's seat when I'm on long road trips and probably the bed because I sleep there. So this is my office slash fridge. So I work cross-legged like this. So it was really important for me to have a workspace where I could do that, a bench that was deep enough. So this is perfect. And I've got this cool little swivel desk that just swivels around and just turns around in all kinds of angles. It even adjusts height. So this is usually how I work. There we go. And I just pop open my laptop wherever I am and I start working. And I can open the door of the van and just look out at wherever I am so it doesn't feel claustrophobic. It's nice and open. I find that I get a lot of work done in my van. Now for internet, I will hotspot to my cell phone, which has 5G AT&T service. So that's been really great. And if I happen to be in like the parking lot of a Starbucks, I can connect to their Wi-Fi. But I've been mostly able to just do whatever I need to do with mobile hotspot. Now it can be challenging in some areas, maybe AT&T coverage is not that great and Wi-Fi is hard to come by. So that's one of the things you have to just deal with with van life. There is this WeBoost signal booster that I'm planning to install on the roof at some point and that will boost your signal from one bar to two bars to three bars or whatever. So that's something I plan on doing. But other than that, I've been able to be very productive on the road so far. So that is my work area. Okay, this is my fridge slash freezer. I have a huge fridge and freezer. It's top loading, which means you just load things from the top. I have all my smoothie stuff in here, frozen fruits, berries, and it's just a huge compartment. There's a whole other layer at the bottom too. It's quite a luxury for van life. Most vans don't come with freezer. They just come with like a little ice box slash cooler. And this is my fridge compartment where I keep all of my celery for my daily celery juice. And I just buy a lot of produce and groceries. So it was really important for me to have a big, big fridge. I also do a lot of meal prep. So the freezer is where I keep all of my containers and make meals for the week. Now, this is a very heavy drawer. This fridge is quite heavy. So it's really important to have really strong latches. So I have to really push that. And these metal latches here, in order to open the fridge, I have to pull it down and then pull out the drawer. And it's really important in van life to just have secure latches for all of your cabinets because they will swing open all over the place when you drive. But this has not caused any issues, so I love it so far. Okay, let's talk a little bit about storage. I've got sort of an attic here. I just put everything up here. It's so messy. I've got some of Jupiter's food, paper towels, flashlight, extra shoes. I don't really know what's going on up there, but I'm glad I have it. And then I've got cabinets up here. 
This is where I put all of my makeup, toiletries. I also have a mirror. It's a really handy portable mirror that I use for getting ready in the mornings. And then this other drawer here is for cups, plates. Hopefully nothing falls out. My mason jars, bowls, everything is pretty much ceramic slash silicone, except for my mason jars and my mug. So far nothing is cracked, but it's something you have to be careful about. You don't want like your favorite, favorite glass wear in a van. Let's talk a little bit about air circulation. I've got an, a fan here, a max air fan. It's really important to have circulation in the van because it's a small space and you don't want like humidity to build up and it gets quite hot. The sun really just builds up in the heat in the van. So when I have this fan going with one of the windows slash skylight open in the back, it creates a really nice cross breeze and it's just, it feels so nice and fresh. So I've got this fan. I also have an AC, which I haven't had to use yet because the fan plus window is working great. But if I'm say in the desert in the middle of the summer, I'll probably not want to have windows open and just have this AC going. This is a really energy efficient AC called the Frez Air. It's sort of a new gadget in the van world, but I heard it works great and I can't wait to try it when the weather's really hot. So far, I haven't had to use it. Now let's talk about the bathroom. This is my shower slash toilet area. This door is not working so great right now, but it's supposed to slide open. This is a composting toilet, the Airhead composting toilet. So I have a container here for the pee that I empty every couple of days in a gas station or in whatever toilet. And then the, for going number two, for the solids, there's a composting container that I haven't figured out how to use yet, but eventually I will get there. But it's a little bit tight in here, but it's it does the job. And if I ever really needed a shower, I could do it in the van. I haven't done it yet because I've mostly been showering at friends' places or hotels or whatever, but it's here if I need it. Welcome to my bedroom area. This is a queen size bed, four inch memory foam. It's so comfortable. And I sleep this way. I think for anyone who's more than six feet tall, they would kind of need to sleep diagonally. But for me, it's great. Me and Juby sleep great here. Now there's some overhead storage. This is where I keep my clothes. It's not super organized. I need to figure something out with Ikea drawer organizers. If you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comments below because I need some help in this area. Now I also have more cabinets over here and this is where I also need some storage help as well, some advice, but I have books and window covers and random stuff in here. My favorite or one of my favorite things about this van, I have a lot of favorite things, is my skylight. This was definitely an added expense, but I think the price of being able to look at the stars at night is, you can't really put a price on that. So it did cost a couple of thousand extra, but I really love it. So this is my bed area. Now this entire thing converts to a dinette slash desk where about four to five people can sit around it comfortably. And that takes about five minutes to convert. And yeah, so it's nice to have like a double duty area that can be a living room and a bedroom. I usually keep it in bed mode because it's just a lot of work, but if I ever have company, I can convert it to something bigger. So I first got the idea of living in a van probably about 10 years ago. I was living in New York City and you know how much you have to pay in rent if you live in New York City. And I was paying off student loans and I was like, it's so stupid. I'm paying thousands of dollars a month when that could be going towards student loans and how awesome would it be if I just lived in a van? So that thought sort of just came to me 10 years ago but I never seriously pursued it. And ever since then, I would just feel this twinge of jealousy whenever I heard about someone living in a van doing van life. So I knew it was just one of those things that I always wanted to do but never seriously considered doing it. And then last year when my life basically blew up and I got divorced and I realized how much of myself I'd given up, like how much of my identity I'd lost being in this relationship I started this journey of just discovering myself again and I decided you know what fuck it like I'm gonna do me I'm gonna do it unapologetically and do all the things that I've always wanted to do and not ask for permission and getting a van was one of those things so that's sort of why I decided to pursue van life and I gotta tell you it's everything that I dreamed of and more like the freedom of being able to go anywhere wherever you are it's your home like I pull up to a Starbucks parking lot, I grab a coffee, I come back in, I take a nap, I wash my dishes, I put on makeup, play music, read a book, 
work like I could do whatever I want anywhere and I am someone that likes to travel with sort of all my creature comforts like I like to have my blender and my juicer and my smoothies and my books and of course my dog and having it all in this compact van has been really great instead of lugging around suitcases from hotel to hotel so I've been living on the road full-time for about two months the plan is this van will stay in the States and I'm going to park it at friends' houses and visit friends when I'm in the States but my permanent home is gonna be in Mexico City which I talk about in this video right here I talked about how I'm planning on buying a place in Mexico City that'll be my home base and then when I'm in the States this is sort of like my travel adventure vehicle slash United States vacation home because I really don't know what city I would want to live in in the States so it didn't really make sense to sign a lease in an apartment in the States so I like this so far because I can visit my friends in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, in Nashville, in New York and not worry about paying for this apartment Alright, now it's time to talk about money so how much does it cost to build a van like this and how much does it cost to live on the road? Does it really save that much money? and I gotta say van builds range from $5,000 DIY to $100,000. So I'll tell you what I did and I'll sort of give you the range. I did not want to build my own van. I wanted somebody else to do it. So you have to factor in two things. First is the van itself. I bought this as an empty white box. It was a brand new Ram Promaster. I didn't want to deal with used vehicle issues because I'm not a car mechanic and I was gonna do a nice build on top of a van. So I bought a brand new one that cost $40,000. Now you can get used vans for 20,000 with a couple 10,000 miles on it. So whatever the van is, that's your starting point. Again, anywhere from, I would say, you know, $5,000 for sort of a really old vehicle to $40,000 for a brand new Ram Promaster. And then there's the build. I have come across other van lifers who DIY'd their own build for maybe $10,000. It took them full time, three months of lots of construction work, but they did it themselves and saved a bunch of money. I had somebody else do it and I spent about $60,000 on top of the 40 for the van to build all of this out. Now my van, you gotta keep in mind, has sort of all of the amenities. I really did not spare anything like I got a skylight I have a shower I have a heater I have AC I have really nice finishes like whatever I just didn't really want to cheap out on things because I wanted this to be a really comfortable tiny house on wheels like my home away from home that being said the builder that I went with venture house they are based in Evergreen Colorado which is close to Denver they did an amazing job I will leave his info down below the link you can book a meeting with him get a free consultation and a price quote he does builds anywhere from $30,000 on the low end to $70,000 on the high end. So that's what his range is. I am sort of towards the high end, which means maybe the cheapest you can get a, a van for is if you bought a used van with like 100,000 miles, let's say it was $10,000 empty white box, and then you went for Venture Houses, that's my builder's name, for their very, very basic $30,000 build, then you could potentially have a camper van that you can live in for $40,000. Now, that probably won't have a shower, it probably won't have a heater, it won't have hot water, it'll just have running water, it will have all the necessities, like a portable toilet and all of that, it just won't be, you know, a fully loaded van. So that's sort of the range. Again, you can book with Venture House below. They did a fantastic job with my van. It's been amazing. There's a lot of weird shoddy van builders out there. So you want to make sure you go with the right one. Highly recommend this guy. He's, he loves what he does. He majored in industrial design. Again, they're called Venture House and I will leave their info below. Now let's talk about how much it costs to live on the road. So interestingly enough, all of your costs mostly stay the same. The only thing that changes is basically rent and transportation. So I still pay for, you know, to take care of Jupiter and I have like health insurance. Like I still need to pay all those things, my phone bill, whatever. So those things don't change. The only thing that I've been able to save on is rent. I haven't been paying rent. I've been parked outside of friends' houses for free. I'll do laundry and shower there and fill up water. When I drive a lot, I have to fill up the gas tank quite a bit, sometimes twice in one day if I'm driving a long distance. Obviously, it's a heavy van, so the gas mileage isn't great. It's a 20 gallon tank and it will probably cost about, depending on where I am, 60 to $100 each time that I fill up. So I've been spending, I would say about $500 a month on gas, and that's because I am traveling on the road quite a bit, visiting friends in different cities all over the West Coast. 
but if you really decided to go the cheap route to really save money you could presumably just park outside of a friend's house or in a national park where you can park for free and really live off the grid live very minimally not pay any rent um, not really drive around so you don't have to pay gas and at that point your expenses would be really low so that's kind of what life on the road has been like I cook a lot so and I've always cooked a lot even when I lived in an apartment I would do instacart grocery delivery and just cook for the week so that's about a hundred dollars a week for me so that really hasn't changed I mean in van life I I have Instacart delivered to whatever address I'm parked in front of and then I open my van door and they give me my groceries so I would say rent is the only expense that I've really saved on and obviously I don't have to fly around a lot I don't have to pay for flights as much because I just drive and so far I think it's been a smart financial decision because at the end of the day what van life gives you is freedom and flexibility no one-year apartment lease to try to get out of because you change your mind and want to go visit another city no, you can just drive your van and go to another city. You don't have to worry about breaking a lease and losing your security deposit. So that's really been the biggest upside to van life, the unlimited choices and freedom that it affords. And I just highly recommend it. I think Jupy likes it too. Don't you Jupy? Do you like van life? Hmm? Well, I gotta say that is it for this van tour video. I hope you loved it. I'll be posting more videos about van life, life on the road, as well as my regular content of making money, saving money, and investing money. And of course, how to enjoy all that money while traveling and just living life. So I hope you will subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll see you next week, same time, same place. See you later.